necessary to be strong but to feel strong one of the one of the things I love about the game of soccer is this it's a fluid game it is a fluid game and with that there are decisions being made every moment of the game beautiful and with each decision comes the opportunity for growth because we get to find out that the decision we made was either good or not good and the same with our life. We make decisions every single day. The beauty of that is we get to say, well, based on what I just did, there's a benefit or a consequence. Now, as a coach, I know this. I struggled with this, is allowing the kids to make decisions. Now, this is a picture. Coach standing on the sidelines. Pass it to Julie. Julie, kick it to me. Hey, you, you pass it. Now, come this way. Push it. And there's this guy, like he's playing a video game, joysticking the kids all over the field. And what happens with that is the kids never really get a chance to make a decision. What we know at the University of Louisville is that we're not going to walk the kids to class. We're not going to call them to make sure they're in bed at 11 o'clock. And when they're on the field, I can't tell them who to kick the ball to. I can't do that. Because if I do, the rest of their life, they're going to be asking me to make those decisions for them. And it's the same with our kids. We have the chance to empower them to make decisions. And when they make a right, catch them. Praise them. When they're wrong, redirect it. Hey, try it man, this way. Hey, maybe next time, look, you know, try this. And when they do it, that's it. There it is. Everybody see Susie doing that. That's great. But allow them to play the game. Allow them to make the decisions. It's a wonderful thing about the game of soccer is they're going to have a ton of decisions. And you know what? They're going to get some of them right. They'll get some of them right. Build on that. The ones they get wrong, what it is, is learning. It's lessons. It is never failure. Failure is when we stop teaching them the lessons. So we have the opportunity to let them make the opportunity, to, to let them make the decisions on our own. It's tough as a, as a, uh, as a coach. It, it, big part of that is creating that, that culture that allows them the confidence to make those decisions. To, that they're not looking over their shoulder when they make a decision, was that okay? But empowering them and embracing that. When I first got to the University of Louisville, I, and I know Ronnie was, uh, oh boy, we're close on me. Let, let, last story. Last story. Sorry, Ronnie. I get going. Uh, we're at the University of Louisville, and we're trying to create a culture, and we're trying to empower the guys. We're trying to create a culture, giving them opportunity to make decisions. One of them was time. I talked to you about time, how critical it is that we respect each other's time, and at the University of Louisville, if you don't show up on time for training, you lose the opportunity to train. You don't get to train that day. Simple as that. So we had this one day early on, I think it was my second semester there, we're training, it was cold winter, and we're training up in Traeger, which is about half a mile at least from where our locker room is. So it ends up being about 7.30, maybe a little later, when two guys are in the locker room and they notice the guy next to them still hasn't shown up for training. Beautiful thing now, cell phones, they could be with me, the aisle them up and they say, oh, gee, where are you? OT's waking up out of sleep, maybe his alarm didn't go off, he wasn't really sure. So he, he wakes up and says, uh, yeah, yeah, I overslept. And they said, okay, we got a plan. 
we'll grab your stuff, we'll meet you in a quad halfway, and then we'll go from there. You, you can change right in the middle of the campus, and it's okay. So they grab all this stuff, they meet him there, he gets there, puts all this stuff on. These two guys that meet him there realize they forgot their own soccer shoes. So now a little kid takes off for training. These guys got to hightail it back to the locker room and still get there in time. I'm up in Traver and I'm, getting, I'm putting out the cones, getting ready. I know what's going on because the players are coming in and saying, hey, look, we're not sure if it's going gonna to make it on time. So I'm watching the clock, and sure enough, just before 8, OT comes through, they go, and he gets in, and he's just walking, and he's just looking around. I know what's going on. 8 o'clock comes, and we start training. We start the functional stuff, the ball work, and OT's looking at the door. He's looking over at the door. The guys didn't show up. A little after 8, they come in. They're huffing and puffing. And they walk over to me, and I said, look, you know the rules. You're here to facilitate training right now. Pick up cones, best, everything else, but you miss the opportunity to train your legs. Now, OT's body language. Head goes down, shoulders are slumped. He's barely moving through training. So we get through the first part, and now we go to the next part, and he starts coming over. He says, Coach, Coach, and I'm sitting up for the next exercise. Coach, I'm walking around trying to avoid him. Don't want to talk to him. So he finally gets close enough, I can't, I can't ignore him anymore. I said, OT, what's going on? He says, not fair. He says, I should not be the one trading. I should not be trading today. It was my fault those guys were late. I said, OT, look, we have, we have rules. We have a culture here, and you know what the rules are. They're late for training. They don't train. But I said, OT, those guys, they've given you a gift. And what you're doing right now is wasting that gift. They've given you an opportunity. And what you're doing with that opportunity is wasting it. So what they've done means nothing. You have a responsibility because of what they did to be the best you can be today. He was unbelievable for the rest of training. His team won everything, and he was clearly the best guy in training. Understand again the culture we create. Provide them the opportunities to make their decisions. You'll be amazed once you give them that chance. As little as six years old, empower them to, to, to develop their gifts and become everything they can become. For your future growth, and this is the last thing I'll say, is this. The, the, the teams are simply a reflection of who we are. Simply a reflection of who we are. We have a responsibility to help them grow and develop. That will be dependent on who we are. You see, it's not about us, and yet it's all about us. Because who we are will dictate what we can offer them. What is the model we're creating? If we want to, if we want to teach them values, we have to have those values in our life. I know for us as a team, if we want to be more disciplined, I have to be more disciplined. I want our team to be fit. I better be fit because they're looking at me and seeing what example I am. Gandhi once said, "Be the change you want to see in the world." What do you want your team to look like? Become it. Model it. You see, we don't not only need that for soccer, we need that for their lives. They need you to be the role model. They need to see how you're acting. You don't think when that referee makes a bad call, they're not looking at you to see how you handle it. Of course. I put some things down here. Future growth, recommendations of reading, personal development. Invest in yourself first so you can invest in the kids. Take that responsibility. All right? And what happens in the process is you'll find not only will you be a better coach, the rest of your life will change as well, all for the better.